On today's show, we highlight a skilled winger out of the NTDP. We'll talk about Teddy Stiga on today's episode of Locked On NHL Prospects. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this show, we highlight everything prospects related for you five days a week, Monday to Friday. I'm Hattie Kalakesh, Director of the North American Scouting for Dauber Prospects, joined by Sebastian High, Director of European Scouting and Head Scout for Dauber Prospects. And on today's show, we'll be highlighting Teddy Stiga and giving you the profile on this player. He's a winger out of the NTDP uh, national team development program. They play in the USHL most of the time. Um, and he's eligible for the 2024 NHL draft and could very well be a first rounder. So we'll get into first and foremost, his play style, the profile, the puck skills, the skating, all that good stuff in the first segment. In the second segment, we'll talk about the more intricate stuff with Stiga, the um, decision-making habits, the toolkit, all that stuff. And then in our final segment, we'll break down what our prediction is for where Stiga ends up in the draft, um, what type of player we expect him to be, what's his upside, and which team would be the best fit for him. Before we get, but before we get into any of that, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase uh, on at checkout. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment letting us know what you want us to talk about next. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, as always, please leave us a rate and review and make sure to make us your first listen of the day. Uh, so let's get things started right away here with the profile for Teddy Stiga. Talk to me about the size handedness and where he's been playing, point totals, all that good stuff to get us started here. Yeah, so Teddy Stiga is a 5'10", 176-pound left shot, left winger, playing for the U.S. NTDP in the USHL. He's an April 5th, 06 birthday, and uh, he's produced really, really well this season. In all competitions, he's played 61 games where he's logged 36 goals and 79 points. And in just the USHL games, in 27 of those games, he scored 18 goals and 38 points. And uh, at the uh, U18 World Championship, where the USA won a silver medal, and Teddy Stiga was a primary offensive driver in that lineup, he scored six goals, added five assists for 11 points through seven games. Production all around is fantastic. This is a player who is very easy to uh, enjoy watching play the game of hockey. He's intelligent. He's super pacey. He's dynamic with the puck on his stick. Very skilled playmaker and play connector. But let us start here with the puck skills. It has to be the passing, right, in terms of the gem of the toolkit. But the shot and the handling are certainly strengths as well. But the passing is just wonderful. Absolutely, the passing is just next level. Um, what makes Tiga, it, what makes Tiga such a good passer is his ability to kind of diversify his passing and use the right pass at the right moment, the right weight in order to connect with his teammates. Uh, this is something we talk about a lot on this podcast. It's a super important thing when we're eval evaluating prospects. It's not just you know being able to make a saucer pass or a backhand pass or a slip pass or a hook pass it's using the right pass at the right moment with the right weight and the right timing that's what makes a good playmaker and that is the hallmark for me of teddy stegas game for me the passing gets an eight it's a really really solid element of his of his toolkit um and he uses it really efficiently he's not like a max plant max plant is a uh, another forward who plays for the NTDP in the same lineup. Max Plan is a player who throws everything at the slot all the time, and it doesn't matter what's in front of him. He's going to try to connect with someone in the slot. That's not Stiga's game. Stiga's comfortable making a low to high pass. He's comfortable playing down low, rimming a pass around, uh, uh, around the boards to a teammate on the other side. Um, so he's not a player who necessarily tries to create with every pass. He's comfortable distributing in order to set up offensive chances. And that for me is a big difference maker in his ability to create. But on top of that, I mean, you don't score 36 goals without having a pretty good shot, right? Certainly not. I think that the shot is at least a sixth grade. It is a strength in his offensive toolkit. But what really makes the shooting so dangerous is how he uh, implements it with the rest of his game. He's really dynamic and also deceptive on the puck. He's able to fake a pass or fake a shot in order to go the other direction. He reads play really well and he chooses the right play to make in most offensive situations with the puck on a stick. His scanning habits are very strong, so he's very aware of the options he has around him and of the amount of time and space that he has available to him and uh yeah i think his goal scoring is also partly a virtue of 
how high his motor is. He's really intense. He creates turnovers. Uh, he forces defensemen to make mistakes. And when there's a loose puck around the goal mouth, he pounces on it and uh, really gets a, a, a pretty large amount of high danger scoring chances from in tight, from that low slot, from around the crease, whether it be a bobbling puck or a rebound or a loose puck or a turnover that he forced. He uh, is able to really create with those pucks that he gets in those dangerous and susceptible areas in the offensive zone. And uh, yeah, it's that pace behind his decision making and uh, the intensity with, with, with which he plays that also facilitates how many goals he's been able to put up because the shot itself is good. It's very quick. It gets off his stick very quickly uh, and he makes his decisions to shoot very quickly as well. That yeah. It's that speed more than the actual mechanics behind the shot that make him such a dangerous goal scorer. So I wouldn't expect his goal scoring to be the same level when he hits the NHL relative to his playmaking as it is against USHL competition, but it still is, is never going to be a weakness in his offensive toolkit by, by any stretch of the imagination either. Yeah, absolutely. I think that overall um, the, the shot really relies more on instinct than pure tools. Uh, he doesn't have that Iserman shot. But obviously when you're playing, when both are playing on the same line, you can see the contrast in both. So obviously in comparison to Iserman, you know, Stiga's shot isn't much to write home about, but, you know, he's still got a decent release and really good instincts to get it off. Uh, but I also want to talk about the handling skills because I think that that combines with his foot speed really, really well. It makes him really effective in transition. He's a very dynamic, energetic player. Um, and the handling skill is important to have when you're when you're skating that fast, when you're moving that fast, when you're working that hard. It's important to be able to handle the puck under duress, under pressure at high speeds. And Stiga does. I wouldn't say it's the flashiest stick handling skill in the world, but I still give it a five and a half, six grade. It's more than enough for him to be able to handle the puck at an above NHL level. Um you know, if he develops, if he continues to grow his game. I think that this is a, a part of his game that will continue to shine as he grows, especially as he develops his tools, as he adds some weight, as he becomes better at leveraging his, his low center of gravity in order to win puck battles and get off the boards. He's going to have more and more opportunities to kind of highlight uh, that stick handling ability. Um, the skating as well, we might as well talk about that. It's a pretty plus tool with uh, with Stiga. I think that, you know, he gets, he, he accelerates really quickly and he has some good top speed. Um, I would say that when it comes to balance and agility, there's like, some lackings, but they're kind of relative to uh, the way that he plays. I mean, this is a player who uses straight line speed a lot. This isn't a player you'll see accelerate, decelerate, kind of manipulate his speed a lot. So he doesn't need as much agility and balance. Um, but the play style that he plays leads him to right to the right spots. Um, and his skating takes him there really well. So I think that overall, the mechanics are good. Um, the, uh, again, the acceleration is really, really good and he can hit a top speed really quickly. Um, it's just a matter of how much agility and balance he can add to his game. I think that'll bolster his game even more because the player, this dynamic with the puck, with that, that much of a quick processing speed and ability to, um, shift his decisions based on what's in front of him. I think agility and balance are key. And if he adds that, he's going to become a really, really good player. Um, the last one, at least I'll talk about the physicality as well, because we might as well, um, Obviously, he's, he's 5'10", 176 pounds. There are some limitations to what he can do physically. Um, but I, I felt I felt often when I've watched him that the effort level compensates for um, the lack of physicality. Would you agree? Completely agree. Like, uh, the last viewing I had, I graded out his physicality at a 5.5, which is a real compliment considering that he is definitely undersized. But he's not routinely out-leveraged or out-muscled in puck battles. He's really intense and he keeps his feet moving. He yeah. knows that if he plants himself and tries to out-muscle a six foot three opponent, that he's probably going to lose that battle if he's static. But he stays in motion. He Again, the pace is so key to the way he's able to play the game. And that's also the case with the physicality. He's able to outpace opponents two pucks, make a very quick little counter check to create a little pocket of space, which is enough for him to escape from that situation with, with control of the puck. And uh, yeah, he, he also likes to turn or, like, like, to, to turn off physical pressure. He turns with that pressure rather than allowing it to decide his movement for him. And he is just really intelligent. And I think that, that intelligence permeates in all other aspects of his game. He has a really good understanding of his own limitations and the raw power is certainly one of those limitations, but the energy, the motor, the intensity, and all of these other complementary facets of his toolkit, I think, compensate wonderfully for that lack of raw strength. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I fully agree. But that wraps things up for our first segment. We'll get into the second segment where we talk about the more intricate stuff with uh, Teddy Stiga's game, including uh, the toolkits, the habits, and uh, the decision-making in his game. We'll get into that in just a second, but just before, a quick word from our sponsors at Game Time. If you're looking to buy cheap tickets last minute to any event, Game Time is the best place to secure them. Game Time is an app that allows you to take to get tickets up until the last minute before the event starts, and sometimes an hour after it starts, you can still get tickets over at Game Time. They are obsessed with saving you money, whether that's uh, flash deals, zone deals, you name it. They've got a bunch of deals to make sure you save money. Uh, they've also got last call and last minute deals, which make sure that um, you, you can get up to 60% off by buying last minute tickets for anything really it's not just sports it's not just games it's you know concerts it's comedy theater you name it they've got it for you um flash deals are also really interesting you get uh, deals that last about an hour um so you can it it, and make sure that you can tune in constantly and see different prices on your end as well and the game time lowest price guarantees make sure that you get the best price for your tickets if you find a ticket in the same section and row for less than what game time has to offer you game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nhl for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, super easy. You just create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-O-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. So download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Alrighty, so moving on to our second segment, we'll talk about the toolkit, the habits, and the decision-making with uh, Stiga, and I think there's a lot to talk about here. As I mentioned before, there's, if there is a kind of disconnect between Stiga's ability to separate laterally versus forward, so he has good acceleration to get off of puck battles, um, to get away from an opponent. Um, and, and kind of short bursts. But I feel like when it comes to moving laterally at top speeds, there is some limitation. And that actually, I think, limits his dynamism a bit, which is so interesting because he is still dynamic despite that. So my question to you is, how far do you think his dynamism can go if he kind of unlocks that added agility and balance? Top line? I mean, I, I think <laughs> that the upside is high, right? Like, if he's yeah. able to to add those elements to to further amplify his dynamic skill, the sky's the limit with this player. I think he has the intent, the, the intelligence. He has the intensity. He has a lot of the off puck habits, whether it be scanning or even defensively. Like he 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 reads defensive play pretty well. He understands how to support his defenseman, play into a role in a very tight defensive system when he needs to. And uh, beyond that, on puck, like he's he's just so creative, and he yeah. fully trusts his playmaking skill. He knows that he's a capable goal scorer as well, and those are both real strengths. And the handling ability works in wonderfully with it. And I agree. I think that if the if that lateral mobility can match the level of his forward mobility, you're looking at a player that that has that that, that really lengthens the road that he has in terms of how much more dynamic he can become in tight spaces against NHL competition. That is a key, key area of that if you want to retain that level of dynamism while also still accessing the middle of the ice rather than being pushed to the perimeter. Um, so I, I think that, that could lead him as high as a complimentary first-line role. I think he has this upside uh, if he's able to, to work on some patches of his game because he has almost everything you could want in a dynamic winger. Uh, and and he's also progressed significantly this year. Like he's added so much uh, in terms of interesting tools and habits into his game that were not there at the beginning of the season. So uh, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he were able to to integrate such such types of, of additions into his skating ability and his overall dy dynamic output. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, we talk a lot about what the difference is between junior leagues and the NHL. And the main difference, obviously, that all everyone talks about, including NHL players, is the time and space. Uh, you get a lot less time and space in the NHL, and that's that's a given. I don't even think that needs to be mentioned. Uh, but the way that kind of translates is the amount of seconds you have between checks. If you want to be very specific about what that means at the NHL level is instead of getting four or five seconds between checks where you can find space, you can hit pockets, it's half a second. And that, that difference, that's why it's super important to have that, that separation ability. Because the more, the more Stiga adds separation ability to his game, um, the more time he's going to have in between checks. And for a player who already doesn't need that much time, I feel like the more you give time to Stiga, the better he gets. 
Um, so the more time he can create for himself, the better he's going to get naturally. So I think that's a key part in kind of seeing his progression hit the next level is you, you need to have him kind of develop that lateral agility, that lateral acceleration as well, so that he can escape the boards a lot quicker. He can get to open ice a lot quicker. And from there, he's just lethal. Um, but I also want to talk about the habits because there's a lot of very interesting habits. You already mentioned the forechecking ability, the intensity, the effort level. Um, it's not just a, a matter of, I, I don't think that has to do with decision making. That's just a natural habits that are instilled in Stiga, the way that he approaches the off puck game. And I think that that's very clear when you watch him. And um, our USHL scout, David, Scott, David, uh, David Saad, has been a big fan of Stiga all year. He said he's his. He said that Stiga is his favorite player to watch this year, and I think I'd agree out of the NTDP. Um, he's my he's the player I've had the less. Me too. Uh, yeah, he's he's the player I've had the fewest hair pulling moments watching, um, because he's a player who works hard, who puts in second efforts, who makes life easy for his teammates. He gets the puck. You're not too worried as you are, for example, with a Cole Eisenman or Cole Hudson. You know what's going to end up in a better spot, uh, and and that makes him really really good. And I think that's a matter of scanning. Um, and scanning's a habit. Scanning's a very, very good habit to have as a consistent element of his game. But it's one thing to scan, it's another thing to spot things. You know, some players are good at spotting things, are good playmakers, but they don't scan. Some players scan a lot, but don't see much. I think with Stiga, it's a bit of both. And that's what makes him such a good playmaker as well. Is he's constantly he's got he's constantly got his head on a swivel, but he also sees options, right? Like this is a player who who sees the ice really well on top of having the the instinct to look around him and check for options, right? Frequent scanning habits, high-end vision, high-end processing speed. That is a delicious combination to have, especially in combination with all of those tools that he has, the puck skills and uh, the forechecking and the intensity, right? Like this is a, a really well-rounded offensive player whose defensive output could still increase and, and improve with time as well. Uh, with how he approaches the game, but yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head there with, with your analysis, and it's also really clear why we love this player. There's there's nothing to really dislike here, and there's so many things to to enjoy and to and to relish watching and scouting uh, with this player. It goes beyond just him not making mistakes. You pull your hair out. He's consistently creating really wonderful sequences, and uh, he's so creative, so intelligent, and he's so deceptive. He consistently gets defenders to draw out to one side before bursting in the other direction, and uh, it's all so planned, and, and it's so intrinsic in how he approaches the game. It, it seems to come easily for him, and I felt like the U18 World Championships were like the, the perfect agglomeration of everything that makes him such an awesome player because it all came together and just one like elite level tournament performance for Stiga. Absolutely. I think the the really interesting part about what Stiga brings to the game is that deception, but it's also an area of concern for me because he relies, I think, too much on deception. Um, what ends up happening at the NHL level is you get really, really smart defenders. Unless, you know, you're 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 playing bottom six minutes against bottom bottom pair defensemen, most of the time defensemen don't bite as hard as they do in the USHL. Uh, so that's one thing you'll have to adapt to is either getting deceptive enough that it doesn't matter what, what he faces or learning when to blend in deception. Because I feel like everything that Stiga does has some decept some deception blended into it. And sometimes once you get to the NHL, defensemen are going to read you. They're going to watch tape of you. They're going to know that they're, they're not supposed to go where you're looking. They're supposed to go the opposite side. Um when when they come up against you so as he climbs the ranks as he potentially gets into a middle six and starts working his way up a lineup you're gonna see stiga kind of hit a wall at some point uh if if he continues to just purely rely on deception uh because again nhl defensemen are very very smart they're they're they know what they're doing so when it comes to that, I, I'm curious to see how that ends up for him. But from what you know, all the really good deceivers in the NHL, the Patrick Kane's, the um, you know, the players of that mold who are really good at consistently fooling opponents into going the wrong way, they're also able to just hit the option in front of them and not not deceive. That was that's what makes him so deceptive. Is you you don't even know if they're going to deceive or not. I'm still waiting to see that from Stiga, uh, and that's a decision making thing. Uh, that's the one thing in terms of decisions that I think that Stiga really needs to work on. That and potentially kind of drawing players in for an extra second before dishing the puck. Because sometimes he he goes for the deception early, 
Um, and that that actually can put him in trouble at times. I think that he gets away with it right now in the USHL with such a good team, the NTDP. But as he climbs the ranks, it's going to get, get a bit tougher. Uh, but that's our second segment done. We'll get it to our third where we talk about the upside with Stiga, where we see him realistically ending up in an NHL lineup, where he ends up at the draft, and which team would be the best fit for him. We'll get into that in just a second. But just before, uh, we'll hear from our sponsors at Indeed. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's why it's the hiring platform that you need to build your uh, team. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. It's quite simple and easy. Is it a Z hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place, which makes the process super easy if you're looking to hire some new talent. Uh, and instead of spending hours on multiple job sites looking for different candidates with the right skills, Indeed's powerful, a powerful hiring platform can help you do it all in one spot. We um, Indeed streamlines hiring with powerful tools that help you find match candidates. Um, these are candidates that They've already sifted through to make sure that they have the right type of pool uh, of, of tools in order to help you uh, in your team. And as uh, someone who's got his, uh, his day job through Indeed, I found Indeed super easy to use. There's no surprises. You can know you know exactly what the employer's looking in terms of talent, what skills they need you to have. And that helps you find the right job for you, a job that matches your needs. Uh, and you're not surprised once you get there with you know what they're asking from you. Uh, so Indeed does the hard work for you and make sure that um, the candidates that you get are uh, fit your description immediately after you post so that you can hire faster. Uh, so start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Uh, this offer is only good for a limited time, so make sure to check it out soon. It's a $75 credit at Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply, but if you need to hire, you need Indeed. Alrighty, so let's close things off here with our final segment where we break down the upside, the projection, and which team would be the best fit uh, for Teddy Stiga. We already alluded to it early in the second segment. Uh, I think we can both agree there is fringe top line upside with Teddy Stiga. It's a player that could get there with the right development, with the right tools added. Um, but realistically speaking, where do you think Stiga ends up in an NHL lineup? I'm optimistic about this player. I have him ranked 20th overall at the moment, um, which is, I think, higher than he is on most boards. But uh, I, I, I see really high-end second-line upside here. If we're, if we're talking within like the realm of likely possibility, I see him as an offensive driver on a second line who can do a little bit of everything, can chip in on both special teams units, uh, likely a second uh, penalty kill if we're being optimistic rather than a first. Uh, but on the power play, could even be a first, a first um, like group guy, uh, because he is just so capable with the puck on his stick, and he does connect play as much as he creates high danger scoring chances, which is a really important combination of skills to have on an NHL top power play unit. But yeah, I, I see, I see real second uh, line upside here. But what I like so much about Stiga as well is that he has like a relatively high floor because he is so engaged, he is so intelligent. He has the puck skills, sir, sure, but they're they're far from everything in his impact and in his game. Like he yeah. could be a bottom six, you know, not checking winger, but like an offensive driver in a bottom six who can check and is a good four checker specifically, um, and and could round out his physical profile a little bit, sure. But I think that that he could play up and down a lineup. Uh, even if he ends up on a third line, if injuries arise, he's one of the first players you can look to to fill in gaps inside a top six because he is so adaptable and he does complement high-end players really, really well. He knows how to fit himself in uh, to make them better, to make himself as, as good as he possibly can be. So he's the type of player that, that many teams want to have, especially going in on long, deep playoff runs where you're often being starved for offense and you want to shake something up to create something a little bit more if you're not scoring goals. Inserting Teddy Stiga into your top six when you have him on a third line is a really nice option to have in your back pocket. You know who he reminds me of? Nikolai Ehlers. That's kind of the upside. I love I Ehlers. Yeah, I love <laughs> Nikolai Ehlers. That, I, I'm so on board with that because I, I'm definitely of the mind that Ehlers is uh, perpetually underrated and deserves first line minutes somewhere, at least a chance yeah. to see what he can do with it. But yes, I see I see the links. But talk me through that, that comparison a little bit because I, I am fully on board. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking about a speedy transitional ace who has good playmaking, an underrated shot, and can either complement some high-end players or drive a line himself really well, depending on where he is in the lineup. 
probably going to end up kind of perpetually in a middle six while deserving more minutes. Um, just there are a lot of similes here. Um, and I think even the stick handling scale, obviously Ehlers is a better skater and a better stick handler as, as he stands than Teddy Sega is. Yes. But the profiles <laughs> are very similar. I think that there's, there's, there's very, there's a lot of similarities when it comes to where they could end up in an NHL lineup. Obviously we're talking about upside here in terms of Ehlers. I think the, the lower end of Stiga's upside is probably well, Jack Roslovic, something in that range, something of that style. Um, there, there's a range of outcomes with Stiga, but, but I think that all roads lead to the NHL with Stiga. I don't really see many scenarios in which Stiga doesn't succeed to add the things you want to see from him. Um, you know, maybe ends up in a Niels Hoaglander situation where he's working yeah. hard, he's doing a lot, but ends up kind of not being in favor most nights. Uh, but still, I think that we're going to see Stiga at the NHL level. I'd be extremely surprised if we don't. Um, but I also want to talk about kind of the realistic projection of where he ends up on draft day. Where do you think he gets drafted? I mean, Nick Ehlers is drafted in the top 10, I believe, uh, in his draft year. Um, <laughs> we're not talking about that here with Stiga. We both have him ranked in the 20s. There are rankings that have him ranked as low as 50. So where do you think realistically ends up on draft day? I would say realistically anywhere between – 22 where the national predators are drafting and like 40 i i do think he will go top 40 like i i yeah. I, I definitely think that, that you're going to see a team uh with a lower draft spot or, or like that are drafting high up in the first round getting their second round pick still having stiga on the board uh and, and really lunging for that but if we're talking within the first round i'd be looking at <laughs> we bring this team's name up a lot, uh, especially in regards to prospects that we like a lot, but the Carolina Hurricanes are up that alley in terms of what they value and the play style they play at the NHL level. Stiga would fit in brilliantly, and they pick at 27th. That would be an option. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, I think, would be really interesting. Uh, not that I, I, I do think they're going to go with a hulking defenseman, which isn't exactly Stiga's profile. But yeah. I think it'd be a really good organizational fit. And yeah. if we're talking second round here, um, you know what? Winnipeg Jets, they're picking at 37th uh, with that Montreal Canadiens pick that that did the rounds around the entire NHL after the Christian DeVore <laughs> trade. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, 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 to, make, to make justice to the Nikolai Ehlers comp, I'll throw Stiga in uh, with the Jets because I also think he fits in really nicely with how they play yeah. at the NHL level. He brings skill, he brings dynamism, but also that intelligence and intensity that they value so much. And uh, a future like third line that's being led by Rutger McGrory and Teddy Stiga is uh, salivating stuff. I was going to say, I don't think I could think of a better fit for Rutger McGordy than Teddy Stiga in terms of the, the prospects that are likely to be available in this range. So yeah, if Stiga, if Stiga slips to 40, whichever team's picking there should run to the stage. He's very much a worthwhile pick. He's a player who has upside and certainty, um, and a player who's kind of gone in, in the shadow of Cole Iserman, um, but oftentimes outplayed him, in my opinion. There are many games I watch of the NTDP this season where I find I found Stiga more impressive than Eisenman, even though Eisenman, obviously, like the upside is absurd. He could score 50 goals in NHL. I think that that's uh, something that could happen. I think that what Stiga brings on a night-to-night -night basis makes him a lot more reliable and, and, and trustworthy in terms of minutes. Eisenman... Gives me Patrick Liney vibes at times, and sometimes give me Alex Ovechkin vibes. Like there's there's a wide range in terms of of what he can do on the ice. But with Stiga, it's consistent night night in and night out effort, and that you have to love as an NHL team. Um, I'm glad you mentioned Carolina because I fully agree. I think that if if they're they're looking to add a forward at 27, which I don't know. Uh, I think they're they're probably looking to add a defenseman, but we'll see. Uh, but if they go forward, I think Stiga is going to be at least near the top of their list. And he'd be a great pickup for them. Uh, but that's our episode done for Teddy Stiga. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Let us know what you thought of the episode down below in the comments. And um, make sure to, to, to leave us a, um, a comment as well, letting us know what you want us to talk about next, which kind of subjects you want us to follow in. We've got a set plan heading into the draft. We're both going to the NHL draft. It's going to be fun. Um, and also, if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, please leave us a rate 
and review and make sure to make us your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, please check out Locked on Sports today. They've got all your news and updates about what's going on around sports on YouTube's first 24-7 sports channel. Uh, and make sure to tune in for our next shows and to continue our, spro- our prospects coverage and ramp things up heading into the NHL draft. This has been Hattie Kalakesh with Sebastian High, and we hope you tune in next time.